Ooh. Ooh. So today, I'm gonna show you how to remove the bags from under people's eyes. Hey guys, Jason Ultrad here, The Foot Illustrator, and today you're going to learn three simple ways to remove the bags from under people's eyes. So let's start off by answering the question, why do you want to remove those dark areas or the bags under people's eyes? Number one, those dark areas and those bags make people look tired. And secondly, those dark areas and bags make people look sick. And then thirdly, and most importantly for a lot of us, those dark areas and those bags make us look old. Okay, so I think it's time for some Photoshop <laughs> magic. So let me jump up into the computer here and let's get this. All right, so here we are in Photoshop, the tight squeeze of Photoshop. And we're gonna be working on a couple of images here. Uh, one being this, this it was a, a girl that I did for a portrait and we're gonna start off with me. Master me. All right, so uh, this is the original image, I hate to say, but we're going to change this to our final image, which is here. Now, I'm not going to do all the coloring and all that kind of stuff. We're just going to stick with removing those uh, bags or those dark areas from under the eyes, as you can see here. Uh, so we're just going to jump right into this. We're going to blow it up nice and big so you can see what we're doing here. Um, it's a little weird looking at yourself like straight in the eyes like that. And that's almost a, probably a little more than a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm a little bit bigger on the computer than uh, for me. So uh, the first one we're gonna start with is a clone stamp, and that's gonna give us that effect here. We're gonna do a patch tool, which will give us that effect. And then we're lastly, we're gonna use a curves and we're gonna get that effect, all right? So let's start off here with a clone stamp. Now, out of all of these, this is my least favorite, and I'll tell you why as we're going through this, all right? So basically, we want to set our feathering or our hardness to 0%, and then we're just going to take a, a clone from somewhere that is a little bit lighter, and we're going to go up here, and we're going to just simply fill in those areas here just like that. Now, that in and of itself does not look the best, but we're going to fix that here in just a minute. All right, so then we're going to come right over here and we're going to do the same thing. Now, the reason I don't like this technique very much is because what you're doing is basically taking a clone of this area and we're putting it under the eyes. And what that means is that you are actually taking skin textures and uh, discolorations and everything and we're putting it under the eyes. And we know that the skin under the eyes does not look the same as the skin there on our cheek. So we take that and we're just going to bring that opacity down and you can blend it in a little bit better that doing it that way. So that's not too bad right there. I'm all, I'm digging that all right. Now, if you're doing a big, uh, you know, like a headshot portrait, this is not a technique that you wanna use. If you're doing something where that uh, character or that person is a little bit smaller in the frame, this might work for you. I'll just put that into a group there, and then we're gonna to go to our second option here. And our second option, we're just gonna make a, a copy of the image that we've worked on here so far. And then we're gonna use our patch tool. In our patch tool, we can hit J on a Mac, probably on a PC as well, or we can go up to the patch tool here and simply choose patch tool. And we're just gonna circle that area that we want to affect, and I'm gonna drag it down again to the cheek area, and then Command D to unselect it, and we're gonna do the same thing with the other side now, and bring that down, and boom, right there. You have that, and then using our original layer underneath it, we can bring the opacity of that down just a little bit to blend in uh, that texture. Again, what you're doing with this technique is you're using that texture from the cheek to bring up here under the eyes. Again, not the best, but I will admit that I use this technique a lot when I'm working on my portraits because I take my uh, characters from something that's really big and I bring them down to something really small and you'll never notice uh, that texture difference, of course, and then we also do a lot of painting, digital artwork on top of it. So you would never notice that in a final product per se. All right, so that's the second way. Now the third way, and the most desirable way 
is to do, I'm going to make another copy and I'm just going to bring that up, up here. And so the third way here is to use a curves layer. So we're going to take that curves layer. We want to make sure that we're actually on the curves layer, not the layer mask. We're going to double tap our top eyedropper here. And then we're going to go and we're going to select an area that we want to match the brightness of. And so let's just say right here on the cheek. All right. Okay. And we're going to click no because you don't want to save that target as uh, default. And then we're just going to go in here to the darkest area. And we're going to hit that. All right. So we get a much lighter image. Then we go over to our layer mask here and we hit command I to invert it back to our original. Then we're going to go to our brush tool here and hit our brush tool. We want to bring that up and oh, the hardness is 0%. We want to make sure that we're on white. And then we are just going to go in here and make sure that our opacity is on 10%. So we're just going to just subtly paint out that area. Now the cool thing about using this technique is that you're simply lightening that area and maintaining all the textures in that area, which is really cool. So we can bring that down there and then we can bring that here and we can even come up here and do a little bit up here just to tone that down a little bit because we don't want this person, this handsome devil, looking so old and tired <laughs> and sick. <laughs> all right, so there we go. All right, and then you can come in here. We're just going to lighten that up just a little bit here. All right. All right. So then we can come in here and we can drop that opacity down because personally, I like to maintain some of the texture, some of the wrinkles, that type of thing. I just don't want it to be so overwhelmingly pronounced. All right. So we're going to do that and we can see that we have subtle uh, wrinkling there. So that, that doesn't make us look like we're 20 again, unrealistic. It keeps us looking the age we are, but just convincing, right? So convincing over uh, realistic. So to do the other eye, we don't want to use the same one. So we're going to go down here and we're going to use another curves layer. And then make sure that we're on the curves layer, not the layer mask. Hit the eyedropper there twice. And then we're going to select that. Push OK. No. And then we're going to go in here and select our dark area here. And that's looking good. Go over to our layer mask. Make sure that we command I to uh, invert it or control I prop possibly on a mat or on a uh, PC. And then hit our brush tool. Get on white again at 10% opacity and our hardness at 0%. We're just going to come in here and start painting away all the age. Painting away the exhaustion. All right. <laughs> So here we go, just painting away. Look how much younger I get, just automatically, boom. It's like age-defying. Now, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of trying to look younger than I am, but with your clients, that might be actually something that they want. So there we go, that's looking pretty good right there. I like it. And then we can drop that opacity down just a tiny bit right to there. That's looking really good. I'm going to command zero to bring our image back to full frame there. And then just put that in a folder, command G. And then our final image, as you can see with that, with some final Lightroom technique is that. So that's original, that's the final. All right, so let's go over to our actual client and check out what our actual client, what we can do with our actual client. All right. So this is the original. You can see that I've been working on it here, cutting an arm off, putting another arm on those type of things. She's hitting a volleyball. And so this is where we're going with it. Just like that. That's the final. That's the original and that's the final. All right. So we're going to go in here and this is one of our options here. And I'm going to bring this way up here so we can see her really good. So that's our clone stamp. This is our patch tool. And then this is our curves, all right? So let's go in and start digging into this with our clone stamp. And then we're gonna come in here and take a sample from down there on our cheek. And we're just gonna bring it in there just like that. Paint in just like that. And then same thing over here. We don't want to get our nose involved. <laughs> that will look 
a little freaky. All right, so there you go. So then we just, and you can even dart or lighten that just a little bit, kind of feather it out, kind of feather it out. Good God, y'all. There we go. That's why I don't like clone stamp. It gets a little funky, especially when you get into these tight areas here, and we can drop that opacity down just to kind of blend it in a little bit more. Again, you're using the texture from the cheek here to fill in the textures under the eye, and those are two different skin textures, all right? So if you're working in something that's gonna be larger, if your character is gonna be larger in the scene, or if you're working on a headshot, those type of thing, a beauty uh, shot, you wanna make sure that you don't use this technique. Use uh, one of the, uh, use the curves technique for that, all right? So this is our clone stamp, and then we're gonna take a copy of this gal here, and we're gonna make sure that we take another copy of her, because now we're gonna use our patch tool, which is J, or over here, patch tool, and we're just gonna come in here, and we're just gonna right around there. I wanna keep that mole, because that's part of her, and drop it down. And that looks pretty good. Now this side is where it's gonna get a lot funky, all right? So we're gonna bring that down. And you can see on this side, how you start getting a breakdown. You see the edges and that's not good. So this is a reason why I don't like this technique in some cases, uh, even when I'm shrinking them down. But we bring this opacity down there and we kinda, looks pretty good there. We can actually go in here and hit the erase tool if you want to, and kind of erase out some of the edging there on that, because you got your original underneath. But then you're kind of bringing some of the dark tones back from under the eye. So not the best technique in this case. So it's really good that you're able to see maybe an instance that it's not working very well for that technique. And then we're gonna bring another copy up here, and we're gonna bring our curves layer up right to there. Make sure we're actually on the curves layer. Go to our top eyedropper, double tap, and then we're gonna go over here. We're gonna work on the left eye first and hit an uh, area that we like the brightness and tone in. And we're gonna hit no, and then we're gonna go in here to an area that's dark that we wanna mask out, all right? Go back to our layer mask, command I to invert it. And then we're just gonna come in here with our paintbrush at 10% opacity and 0% hardness, and we're gonna just start painting out that dark area. That's a little harder on this young lady because of how defined that dark area is right there. So uh, we gotta be careful on it. That's not looking too bad right there. Kinda of liking that. And we can just come in here and get a little bit there, a little bit there. Good. And then we can drop that opacity down just to bring a little bit of real life back into it. And then we're going to go to our another curves layer and make sure we're on the curves layer. Hit that eyedropper twice. Come to a place that you want to change the tone to because it's a different tone on this side than it is on this side. And then no. And then over here to the dark area and then command I to invert on the layer mask, back to our brush tool, and just start painting that out. And that's looking good right there. Now this technique works the best for this image because of how uh, precise we can be with it. We don't have to worry about getting those hard edges like we did with the, uh, you know, the patch tool. We don't have to worry about some of the difficulties with the uh, clone stamp. Finding it difficult to speak and think at the same time and work here. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's just drop this opacity down just a little bit. I'm not really digging this dark line here, so I might go in and do some further work on it. And I don't know what I would do yet, but let's just let's just play with it and see what we can come up with. Let's try that, and then we're just going to drop that opacity way down. That's not too bad okay let's try a different one so that's a clone stamp let's try the patch tool and just see if we can't make a little bit of shaking see how jaggedy that looks just looks horrible i'm just gonna come in here let's see let's just drop that tone down or that opacity down and then we're just gonna come in here that's not looking too bad. So that's using the patch tool. That's erasing some of the jaggedy edges and that's dropping opacity down to that effect. 
trying to get that same effect. And we could also, let's try it and see if we can change it over here as well, just to see. And we might have to come in here and take away some of that jaggedy edge there. Good. That's not too bad. That looks pretty, pretty good right there. I kind of dig that. All right. So we had to do a little bit of extra work on there. So, you know, I think the thing to highlight with each of these uh, techniques is really that they're great techniques to use, but sometimes you might have to actually incorporate some of the other techniques. That's why I think it's important to know three, four, or five different ways to do one thing. So there you have it. There's how you uh, remove those bags from under those eyes so we don't look so old, not in her case, so sick, not in her case, but so tired maybe in her case. All right, so that's a tired look right there. That's a good, youthful, young, healthy looking young lady right there. That is a tired, old, sickly looking dude. And then when we take care of those bags, that is a nice looking, handsome, <laughs> not so sick looking, not so old looking, man. <laughs> All right. So that wraps it up for this tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and get out of this tight squeeze computer box and we'll talk here in just a minute. So give me just a second. All right. So to help you take away some of that stress in the editing process, your goal is to be as convincing as possible, not as realistic as possible. And the reason I say that is because anytime that we're taking an, an image and we're and the reason I say that is because anytime we're taking an image and we're editing it, we're taking it from a place of being real, having bags or dark areas under the eyes, to a place of not being real, not having bags and dark areas under the eyes. So the goal is always to be as convincing as possible, not as realistic as possible. Alrighty, so if you want more awesome video tutorials like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, if you got something out of it, hit that thumbs up, if you will. And also, if you wanna take your composites and your digital art to that next level, go ahead and check out my premium compositing tutorials over at Photillustrator dash masters Go ahead and check out my compositing, my premium compositing tutorials over at photillustrator-masters.teachable.com. That is photillustrator-masters.teachable.com. We should make a little jingle out of that. All right, so that's a wrap on today's tutorial. So let's get this and go make some awesome pictures. I'll see you next time.